Good morning, everybody. Welcome to e Thursday. Okay, everything is going okay here. Um, sorry about the late notice and the change of time. We are an hour earlier today, but it's still e Thursday, And I think we might miss quite a few people, but they can catch up later. So I trust you all well today. Um, just let me see who I have here. I have Annette. Hmm, Mbere. Forgive me if I mispronounce that. Nadine Lawrence from Brisbane. Nice to see you, Nadine. Zelda Linders is here. Singatwa, nice to see you. Megan Hope, good morning. And let's see who else joins in. Um, we are just going to get going straight into this. I hope you've got your notebooks because I have a lot of scriptures here. Corne von Nikak, welcome to you. Renee Hope, hi. Um, and let's see who else joins in. But I've got a lot of scriptures for you today. So I need you to get your notebooks out and write them down. Because I don't know if we'll have time to look at all of them. And I want to say I don't have all the answers about miracles. But we're going to look at some miracles that happened and why God does them today. Um, and to encourage ourselves. Because I believe that this is a time where we need to be expecting to see miracles. It's always a time for miracles, but um, especially now. So, Natasha Ghost is here. Good morning. Almarie Vivius is here. And I see Maria Bovin from Sweden. Nice to have you. Um, I think it was your post that I just saw where you quoted Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah 62, I could be wrong, you changed your cover photo and there was this amazing photograph and you quoted a scripture and it really witnesses with me. We're living in amazing times where if we get our eyes off what's going on in the natural and we keep our eyes on God, we will see that we are living in great times of influence as believers and to see the glory and to see the miracles, which is why I'm talking about this today. So... Um, my first scripture, I first want to read this to you. It's Colossians 1, 16 and 17. Before we start talking about miracles, let's talk about the miracle working God we serve. Um, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah, I'm already in Isaiah, or oh, I'm still there. Jennifer Rapanis, I'm glad you saw the notice and you're here. And Michelle Moore, glad to see you too. So, um, Colossians 1, verse 16 says this. For by him, capital H, are we speaking about God here? For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him, all things consist. In other words, all in him, all things are held together. So I want you to look at how powerful this father is that we serve, that he is a miracle working God. You can read it in the Bible, which we're going to look at today. And he wants to do the same for everybody. And he wants us to have this walk in this understanding and this expectation that we are part of what God wants to do in this end time. I don't want to say end time revival, but, but it's the only thing that comes to mind. But the great outpouring of the presence of God that we are going to be part of. And so we need to have an expectation to that God wants to use us and move through his people. And if we're not prepared for it, then we'll, we'll always see other people stepping into these things 
and we'll be watching from the sidelines and we'll get blessed. And maybe uh, you might even be the one who needs a miracle. And so let's have a look at it today. Um, as I said, I've got a lot of scriptures. I first want to read Psalm 77 because you can't talk about miracles and all the flowery things and all the goose, the things that give us goosebumps without looking at the word. Because I don't think um, it's good enough just to have goosebumps and say, Hallelujah, I got my miracle. We have to be grounded in the word of God and what does God say and his character, which is what I always speak about. So I said, Psalm 77, verse 14, you are the God who does wonders. That's, that's one of the things, one of the many things God is known for. He does wonders. You have declared your strength among the peoples. So that's our God. Then in John 14, 12, Jesus said this. Uh, we're going to look at a few things in the book of Acts this morning as well. Um, John 14, 12. And remember what I'm doing is I want to encourage you to have an expectation to see miracles through and in your own life. Jesus said this, John 14, 12, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And um, what are the works that Jesus did? He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed and all who had sickness. He never once stopped and said, no, it's not, today's not your day. Um, I don't have enough miracle working power. I have to go and separate myself. I'm tired. I'm irritated. I need food to eat. He healed all who came to him who were sick. And so when we talk about miracles, you know we're talking about healing as well, as well as the other things that happened. Um, John 2.11 speaks about the first miracle that Jesus did was when he was at the wedding in Cana and he changed the water into wine. Um, and so that was the first, it says the first sign that he did. And when miracles happen, I think you know this, you should know this by now. When miracles happen, when people get healed, um, when God opens up the Red Sea, when he makes a way before you where there seems to be no way, the reason it happens is to point us to him and his glory and his goodness and his miracle working power. So when we are in a season where we're going to begin to see Maybe you have already, I don't know, but begin to see the miracles that God is going to do around you and in you and through you. It's always to point you to him. A lot of people say signs and wonders. When we see the signs, we wonder, how did this happen? But then in our wondering, we also say, wow, that was God. And I'm sure you, if I have some miracles in my own life, you have a lot of miracles in your life that you can remember. And when you are feeling down, when you're feeling fearful, when you're feeling hopeless, when you need to make a decision and there's pressure, always go back to what God did in your life. That's the purpose of a testimony in your life. So you can be pointed back to this God who does wonders. Because he, he doesn't only want to do one miracle for you, he wants to continue doing miracles for you, in you, and through you. So let's have a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And this is a very interesting scripture that a lot of people seem to overlook when we talk about the church today, how God has set his church up. And God is very clever. I think you know that. He's very clever. He knows who needs to be where, doing what. He gives us the grace to do it. He gives us an anointing to do it. We even have an anointing to be witnesses. So God has got all the bases covered. He knows what is about to happen. He knows who's going to be involved and what they need. If you have to make a decision about something, uh, maybe you're looking at the decision and it seems a bit fearful because you don't know what's on the other side of the decision that you need to make. But God has already gone before you. If it's his will, he's already gone before you. He's prepared the place before you. And as you step into it, he gives you the grace and the anointing to do what you're stepping into. So, Jess, it's nice to see you. I see a lot of more people have joined in. Um, just sorry, I just want to say hello to a few people. Fontini, nice to see you. Jennifer, 
Rapanus, cheers from East London. Jillian Miles, nice to see you. Haven't seen you for a while. Renee Ibe, Shawnee Stevens, um, Cynthia Neves, I missed you. And I see Jennifer Rapanus is already doing her homework and typing the scriptures out there in the comments. So, 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, just let me say to you that only today is E Thursday going to be at half past nine instead of half past ten because I have to juggle my time today. I've got quite a few things on. Um, and if I don't do E Thursday, I always feel unsettled as if I've really missed out on something good because I enjoy these more than you do. So uh, 1 Corinthians 12 says this. Um, 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 Okay, it is, I'll read from verse 27. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues, and then it goes on. And then after all of this, um, he says, do you have the gift of healings? Do you speak with tongues? Do you all interpret? Blah, blah, blah. And then he says, but earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet I show you a more excellent way. And then the famous 1 Corinthians 13 is about love. Uh, though I have the gift of this and that and whatever else, but I don't have love. I'm like a noisy uh, uh, sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And if I can remove mountains, but I don't have love, I am nothing. And I think you know that if you want God to use you um, in any way, if you want to see the, the power of the Spirit flow through you, the, the emphasis has to be the love of God for those people you're ministering to. When it comes to prophetic ministry, it sounds all nice and spiritual, and, and you look amazing up there when you get a word of knowledge or Somebody sitting in here, their vertebra number three, whatever else is, whatever. And then God heals that person. And the person who's had the word looks so amazing. And sometimes there's this tendency to want to prophesy and get words of knowledge. And so that it looks like we've got a lot of faith. But our, our, our starting block has to be the love of God for the people you're ministering to. I, don't, I never ever just want to be a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal giving out a whole lot of information and even scriptures because it makes me sound as if I know what I'm talking about. The reason we minister to anybody is because of the love that the Father has for those people. And then you're going to stay on the straight and narrow. Then you're not going to get into performance and get upset if somebody else prophesies and somebody else gets 10 people healed and you prayed for one and they didn't even get healed. Then there won't be all of those things happening. And when God, in a time of ministry, when God wants to manifest or reveal himself through his body, if we are learning to love one another, to honor one another, to honor the gifts in somebody else's life more than what you think you have, we're in a good place. But now let's get back to 1 Corinthians 12, where God says God is appointed. Uh, verse 28, God has appointed these in the church. It means he has set or put in place these things. And it's easy to say, okay, we know about apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors and all those things and evangelists. God has put those things in place, but it says here he's put miracles and gifts of healings in place in the church. So this is what miracles means. Dunamis. And if you've been to any Bible school or, or if you've been in any faith church for uh, even a short amount of time, you will have heard them speak about the dunamis power of God, the miraculous power of God. It's like the dynamite power of God. And you know what a stick of dynamite does? Absolutely nothing until it is lit. And that little, you know, that you see in the movies, that here's a stick of dynamite and the little cord or whatever you call it, the... See, I don't even know what it's called. They light the end and it burns down and then it explodes. I believe in this season that we, we've got the stick of dynamite, every single one of us, and, and the flame is just being lit at the top here. And we are the ones who can either put it out by our unbelief or our fear 
and then or we can just let God begin to awaken us and begin to stir this revival in our spirits and say God we want to be part of what you what you're about to do but the the dunamis is miraculous power but it also means inherent power in other words it's there but it's waiting to be kick-started and today I want to kick-start that revelation in your life it means power and influence which belong to riches and wealth now we're not talking about money here when it comes to the miraculous power of God. It's power and influence that we have that's inherent, which is inside of us waiting to come alive, that because of the riches and the wealth of the God we serve and the riches and the wealth of the kingdom that we are part of, the riches of His glory, the, the immeasurable love that God has for a lost, broken world out there are the riches that we carry the scriptures, the revelation that he's give, he gives to us, the power of the Spirit in his life, I see this as riches. Riches talk about things that we have, and wealth talks about uh, the same thing, wealth. wealth. We are wealthy because we have riches. So, dunamis power also means power in numbers. That's why the scripture speaks about you are the body of Christ and members individually. You're, you are an individual member in your church. Jennifer Rapanis, Fontini Wilters are both individual members in a church in Johannesburg. Um, I know that. It's not a word of knowledge. I've met them before. We've ministered in the church quite often. And so they are sitting there with a purpose and a calling and a function and a vision and the backing of heaven and prophetic words and testimonies in their lives and all that inherent power that needs to be released. Um, the, so you members individually, wherever God has put you, but you are not an individual. When God, when God is talking about his church, his end time church, the called out ones, you are an individual, obviously, but he wants us all working together because this is where the power comes in. You know, a lot of people speak about prophetic uh, prophets and apostles. If you look at them in the, in the New Testament, they travel together in teams most of the time. They travel together. Um, they ministered in teams. There's so much power when you minister in a team. I want to speak to every prophetic person here. You have your unique calling and encounter with God and your journey with God. But when you link up with other prophetic people, you don't have to go out and minister in teams with them, but just the connecting with them and the hearing what is God saying to them and it, they bounce it off you and you come to them and you say, this is what God said to me. And there's, there's an iron sharpening iron thing that happens. And, but there's also, it's not just to sort each other out or, or to keep each other on the straight and narrow. It's to inspire each other to press in for more revelation. That's where the dunamis power comes in when people work together as a team. I know that when Rory and I minister together, we work off each other. We, you, maybe you've come to some of our online um, sessions um, when Rory's had me on to have a discussion about something. We haven't prepared our notes in advance. He starts talking and, and I'm listening to the Spirit and, he, and I, I'm able to pick up because we've learned to work with each other over 30-something years of ministry. Now, maybe you're, you're an intercessor. Find somebody else who's praying. You can pray with the same level of faith that you have. And so it's not just you on your own there. You do your bits on your own. There have to be times where you are growing in your journey and, you know, moving, uh, growing in your gifting and moving in your journey. And it's you and God. But always have other people involved in your life so that you can be sparking each other off. Uh, one stick of dynamite is more powerful when there are other ones that get added to it, obvious. It also means, dunamis power also means power uh, that is resting on, on armies, forces, or hosts. Okay? So you got that. Um, the next scripture I want to take you to is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11, and it says this, but one in the same spirit, it's talking about the different gifts, okay? Let's, let's go back a little bit further here because it says, um, I just have to go back. It says, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. And if you read ahead of that, I, I don't want to get into this whole thing about the gifts and things because then we're going to be here for three hours. Um, the gifts, the diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. 
But, and it says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. And the manifestation of the Spirit is how the Holy Spirit wants to reveal Himself through you. That's when the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of the Spirit is prophecy, example. God wants to speak to Cynthia Neves today. So someone online gets a prophetic word and delivers the prophetic word. And that is the Spirit being manifest through somebody too, Cynthia Neves. Maybe Cynthia does need a prophecy today. So if you get a prophecy for Cynthia Neves, then put it in the comments. Make sure it's just an upbuilding, edifying, comforting word from God. So to, for to one is given the word of wisdom, another word of knowledge, da, 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 to another faith, to another gifts of healings. In verse 10, it says to another, the working of miracles. And then it goes on to prophecy, discerning of spirits, tongues, interpretation. And it says, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Okay. So when we talk about miracles, when we talk about any of these gifts, I'm not sure if you can hear the dogs howling across the road for me, but if you can, I'm doing my best to switch off. I think maybe the postman has arrived or something, but we have very big dogs across the road who howl at certain times of the day. Um, so when we're talking about miracles and healings, wouldn't it be amazing if we could just make it happen when we wanted to? Because we know God always wants to heal. God always wants to give someone a miracle. And I want to say this to you. I wrestled with this. Uh, when my brother was sick in hospital, <clears throat> uh, maybe it was the beginning of July, um, I wrestled with this because the doctors were saying that he wasn't going to make it, but I knew about the goodness of God. Um, I had all my scriptures in place. I was doing my bit. I was sitting up late at night. I was thanking God for a miracle because we needed a miracle. And then it never happened. He actually passed on. The miracle was that he got saved, which he would not have got saved in any other instance apart from another miracle which God could have given us. But he got saved two days before he passed away. But I wrestled with this thing and I thought, God, I've done my bit. And, and if only I could shake the gates of heaven and get that miracle that I need and bring it here now. And it never happened, and, and I had to go to God. And then I, I, I remembered the scripture that the Holy Spirit, um, what did I say to you now, um, distributes to each one individually these gifts, the, the miracles, working of miracles, because we needed a miracle. He gives it to each one individually as he wills. So I couldn't say, God, I blame you because you didn't do it. I blame myself because maybe I didn't have enough faith. I, I just had to settle it. And say, God knows. But I know that the next time I need a miracle, I'm going to push in even more. And say, God, speak to me. I need understanding. Give me more scripture. I'm going to do my bit. I'm not going to let that one seem like a failure. Because it wasn't a failure. It was something that I don't have all the answers to. And there's so many people who have been through things. And they don't have the answers but what we need to do, what we, what we are not meant to do is stop there and say, I don't believe in miracles. Because the same week that I prayed for my brother and he passed away, it's the same week that I prayed for somebody and she got healed of cancer. And so I can't say, you know, we can never put God in a box. That's the thing. But from our side, our faith is in him. He is faithful. He does. Um, he distributes these gifts as he wills. But here's something that we have to learn. In that one scripture where it says, distributing to each one individually as he wills. His will is healing. His will is miracle working. His will is breakthrough, turnaround, restoration. Whatever Jesus paid for is the will of God. But the way miracles happen is by faith. The way faith works is by instruction. So we can't just go out there and say, oh, God performs miracles and grab the next door neighbor who needs, who's deaf maybe, and say, God's going to heal you today. And then nothing happens because God never told you to go and do it. His word says you'll lay hands on the sick. But I believe that if, when we want to see miracles, 
It has to come by an instruction of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God saying, I want to manifest myself. I want to reveal the love and the goodness and the power of God through you. If you will obey this instruction, knock on the door of the lady across the road and say, I've come to speak to you. Lay hands on her and her ear. You know, it's a specific instruction that brings a miracle. So let's have a look at Mark 16 verse 20. I think that's it, Mark 16, verse 20. And we're going to get into the book of Acts just now. I hope you're being encouraged to trust God for miracles today. Uh, I can tell you I am a walking miracle, which is why I can talk to you about miracles, even though there are ups and downs in life. Some people we pray for, nothing happens. Other people we pray for and we feel like, I don't know, you hear yourself saying things and you say, Oh, God, please, come and heal this person. You better do something. Um, and God does it. Um, Mark chapter, what did I say? Mark 16 verse 20 is very important. If, if you ever want to be encouraged about miracles and encouraged about the fact there are still people today who say, Jesus, God doesn't heal. I don't get it. I do not understand why Christians would choose to believe that today God doesn't heal. Something has to change. So Mark chapter 16 verse 20, um, and they went out, this is just, the Lord has just spoken to them, he was received up into heaven, sat down at the right hand of God, and in verse 20, and they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. That's the end of the book of Mark. So when we're preaching the word, there should be a sign following to confirm the word that we preached. If we're going to go out and preach a whole lot of rubbish that is not grounded in the word, if we're going to go out and preach a whole lot of things, uh, example, if you go out and you preach that God, is, God doesn't heal today, I can guarantee you're not going to see anybody get healed in that meeting. Because when the word comes, there's faith to receive what the word being preached is saying. So if you want to see healing, maybe start talking about healing some more. Um, if you want to see miracles, maybe dig into the Word, look at the miracles, find the Scriptures, read the Scriptures that I'm giving you today and say, okay God, I'm expecting miracles. You know, today is not the day for believers to be sitting at home and tolerating what the enemy does. Tolerating. I've got a Scripture here. Yeah, I'll give it to you just now. We tolerate what the enemy puts on us but Jesus has paid for that thing already. And we say, no, it's not my day today. God's not going to heal me today. I'm not going to see that miracle today. Um, you know, it's, it's always living on, on, in the place of saying, God, what is the instruction today? Um, the other day, on Tuesday, I spoke about Isaiah 55. Um, Listen carefully to me. It's being in that place. If you, if you weren't there on Tuesday, it is called Come and Eat. And it's on, on this page, Kathy Mel Ministries, Come and Eat. When we are listening carefully for the instructions, but not only the instructions, when we're listening carefully to the things that God wants to give us to feed us about His goodness, about His character, about His love for you as a believer. Whether you ever do anything or not, he wants to feed you so that your soul delights itself in abundance. Isaiah 55 is a very important scripture today in my life. Maybe not yours, in my life. Listen carefully to me. Eat what is good. Don't fill yourself up in the rubbish that says, God doesn't heal. The devil's in control. This and this and all this rubbish. Eat, eat what is good and listen in for the instructions so that the faith comes and you can be part of what God is about to do. So, so, and God will be confirming what he said to you with signs and wonders. And I know a lot of you have got testimonies about what God has already done in your life and, um, and all the amazing things that you can tell me that you heard from God and that God wants to, to continue to do or or do even more than he has done with you, through you, and in you. And I feel in this time that as leaders in the body of Christ, um, that with so much opposition 
and division and arguments amongst believers, it's important to walk in the grace of God. It's important to walk in the love of God. Get yourself saturated in the love of God because people are going to oppose things that you say. People who you least expected to come against you are going to say, no, I don't believe that anymore. I don't believe I need to go to church anymore. And it's the devil throwing all these things. And if we don't walk in love, we're going to get caught in the, in the confusion and the discouragement. And then this is why a lot of people who are leaders feel like they want to give up. And today I'm saying it's time to trust God for miracles. He's appointed miracles in the church already. Inherent power, the inherent, you know, like I see sticks of dynamite that have been put in churches around the world. These powerful gifts and callings and anointing, people sitting with powerful vision for the future of the church. And at some point, these things are going to come together and explode. And we, the church is on the winning side, you know that. So, um, Acts 14, 13. Um, how are we doing for time? We're doing okay. Acts chapter 14, verse 13. Is there anybody online who needs a miracle today? You can give me a... Don't, don't give me a heart because I'll miss it. Just say, yes, me. Um, if, you, if you are on here and you saw I said I'm speaking about acts and miracles and you need a miracle today, Put it in the comments and say, yes, me. And we are going to pray for miracles today. I see Rodine and Jess and have already put yeses in there. And Natasha, okay, we, before we leave today, we're going to pray for miracles. God is a God of the impossible. When it's natural, when it's in the natural, it looks impossible. God takes delight in those things. He, he loved finding the barren woman in the Bible, and they were the ones who fell pregnant. So maybe your situation looks impossible because you're saying, everything is against me. And I'm not talking about having a baby. Everything is against me. The doctors have said this. My friends have said this. I can't do this. I can't do that. And God's saying, nothing is impossible for me. So today we're going to agree for some miracles. And miracles, that, that dynamite power of God comes and breaks what the enemy has said, opens up a way where there seems to be no way, changes a wilderness into rivers of living water. That's the miracle power of God that he set, he puts in place in the church. Okay, so today we are going to be the church and we're going to call these miracles forth today. So what did I say? Acts 14, 13 says... Uh, why did I say Acts 14, 13? I think I got that wrong. Um, because it's, it's a random scripture. Um, yeah, it means nothing. Then the priest of Zeus, who, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, intending to sacrifice with the multitudes. That's Acts 14, 13. If you're taking notes, ignore that. Um, I have no idea why that is there. Maybe I'll find out later. Uh, I mean, maybe it was it was obviously a mistake, but there's a reason. Um, I've got the next scripture is Acts four thirty three. That makes more sense. Let's go to Acts four thirty three, um, and I see we have quite a few people who need a miracle today. Acts four thirty three says this. Uh, lately, maybe you've heard me. I'm getting back into the book of Acts. And it is so exciting. Acts 4.33. Oh, okay. Now, Acts 4.33, if you read in verse ahead of this, in Acts chapter 4, um, it is the where the man at the gate, beautiful, is healed. And this guy is a huge miracle in this area. And as usual, the religious people rise up and they have a problem with it. Don't you find it strange that when God begins to heal people, when people get baptized, when people begin to speak in tongues, when miracles happen, that religion always rears its head. And um, religion is always opposed to the supernatural workings of God. Um, I don't have to tell you this, but you know, it rears its head saying, 
how could you heal on the Sabbath? I mean, surely people would be happy that somebody got healed, somebody got their miracle. But religion will say, no, why did you do this? Why did you do it this way and on this day? And so religion. So when this guy, the lame man at the Gate Beautiful gets healed, who had been sitting there for years and years and years doing the same thing. He was okay when he stayed there and he was quiet and all he did was beg for money. But when he got his healing, you know, uh, Peter and John came past. They were on their way at the hour of prayer and they said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. What they did have was that inherent dunamis power inside of them. And they that day it got kick-started and they he said, rise up in the name of Jesus, the authority and the power in the name of Jesus and the miraculous power that they were walking in got this man healed and, and stirred up the opposition. But then it says, so Peter and John get arrested. Can you picture this? You go and heal, someone gets healed and you get arrested for doing something good. Um, and then they are forbidden to preach in the name of Jesus. And they say all these amazing things. Uh, we can't but speak the things which we've seen and heard. Um, and then it says, when they further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. For the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. You know what it's like if you've ever been to a miracle meeting um, and you see somebody um, get up and they get healed. Um, the, the whole atmosphere in the place changes. People begin to glorify God. God gets the glory, not the person who's performed the miracle. And this is one of the reasons God is setting us up. He's preparing us to walk in humility and honoring Him and honoring one another. So when it happens, we're not going to get the glory and say, hey, that's me. Every miracle points towards God and He gets the glory. So then what happens is they get together, they, they, they are released now, breathe a sigh of relief, they're released, and they go, it says they went to their own companions and told their friends everything that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard all of this, they all got together. They didn't say, oh God, please come and uh, deliver us. Please come and rescue us help us, there's so much opposition, they didn't, they said in verse 31, actually in verse 20, I'll read from verse 29, this is a prayer, now Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. Would we do that if we had just been threatened uh, of, uh, of being arrested because we, someone got healed? We, would we go and say, God, I'm, I never want to do that again. I don't want to cause trouble. But these guys were of a different spirit. Miracles require faith, but miracles require people of a different spirit. Miracles require total dependency on the keeping power of God. And no matter what opposition comes, no matter what happens, we're going to stand our ground and we're going to say, God, we know this is you. You're going to get the glory for this. And then it says in verse 31, when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. We got to pray prayers that are going to shake things and shake, shake hell and shake heaven um, and release the answers. That's what I mean. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Someone who walks with a miracle mentality has boldness that other people don't have. There's a boldness and it's not stupidity. It's not assumption or presumption that God's going to do something because I've done my bit. It's boldness because you've heard an instruction from God, you know the scriptures, you know God wants to confirm his word with signs and wonders, and you have a boldness that just makes you stick out in the crowd. Every single person who gets up on the platform and prays for miracles, there's an anointing that comes upon them because God has, the Spirit of God has distributed the anointing and the grace and the power, dynamite power on that person in that moment. The people who do miracles don't just perform miracles all the time. Like, can you imagine that? 
It's in that moment. The miracle is needed in the moment that dynamis power is released and activated and a miracle happens. But the atmosphere around them shifts and then other people begin to get bold because they believe, oh, God's doing miracles. I want to jump into this river. I want, I want to be part of this too. And this is what I believe is, is, a, is going to happen. So then it says here, then remember now, this was a time of great opposition because the devil wanted to stop the miracles. This was just one miracle that caused a whole lot of uproar, but the devil knew what was coming. And then in verse 33, it's, this is the scripture I actually was leading up to, Acts 4 verse 33, And with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. And the great power is God's power, and the great grace is the enablement that God gives to man to do what they're called to do. So in a time where we're needing miracles, in a time where we are wanting to see God release his dynamite power through his church, we need to expect great power and great grace. Great grace, the, the grace of God that enables you to be bold. The grace of God that enables you to trust him for a miracle. The grace of God that enables you to do what you've been called to do in the season. And don't let the enemy threaten you and say, I'm going to lock you up. There's too much opposition. Rather go and hide away. This is your time to have a different spirit and say, I'm believing for miracles. And not just for yourself, for other people out there. We want to see the miracles. Um, well, let's have a look at Acts chapter 12. I said we were going to look at the book of Acts, Acts chapter 12, and I'll try and do this quickly, and then we're going to pray for miracles. Acts chapter 12 is another miracle that happened, but a different scenario. Peter gets arrested. They all seem to get arrested, and we want to talk about going back to the book of Acts without the arresting, and all. I don't want any of that stuff. I don't want to be stuck in prison. I want to see the miracles. So... Um, Peter gets arrested because Herod was harassing people from the church. The King Herod was harassing people from the church. James, the brother of John, was killed. Um, then, because Herod saw that when James was killed, the people were pleased. Don't you hate religion? And they were pleased. Then, he got hold of Peter as well. So, he arrested him and put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. This is Acts chapter 12. This is not a very nice scenario that we are reading about here, but Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Yeah, remember I said the dynamite power is found in uh, numbers, and the church is... We are numbers together, in the individuals put together as the called out ones. You know the dynamite power that there is when God's people get together and pray for miracles? When God's people get together and agree on something that God has said? And it wasn't God's will for Peter to be in prison because he was sitting with a whole lot of promises that God was going to build his church. Um, remember, Jesus said to him, uh, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. Um, there was another one that God gave to Peter um, that when he was old, Jesus gave to Peter, when he was old, he would be led. Peter wasn't old yet, so Peter knew that his time was not up yet. Um, so here it says, this is why, in verse 6 of Acts chapter 12, it says, when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. So he was secured in the natural, but he was at a place of rest. Can you imagine if you had been arrested? Um, somebody else, <coughs> James, has just been killed with a sword for, for what he, believing in Jesus and, and performing miracles and doing what he did. And now, would you be tied up in chains between two guards? There's the, the gate to the prison secured by guards as well, would you have a nap? I don't know if I would, to be honest with you. I'd be praying in tongues and saying, God, come and deliver me. But this guy was sleeping because he had a previous promise. So he was at rest. 
I'm telling you, the greatest miracles come when we are at a place of rest, knowing we can't do it. Only God, but God and only God. And a lot of people are trying to get the miracles and trying to get the healing, and they're working to get it instead of doing it from the place of rest. Faith is a place of rest. So when we're at that place of rest, then faith begins to work, and then we begin to hear, and then we see the healing, and then we see the miracles. So Peter's sleeping, but then, listen to this in verse 7 of Acts 12, Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. That's a miracle. But that miracle came about because of the other people who were offering up constant prayer to God for Peter, who was in jail. I want to tell you, never underestimate the power of your prayer. But listen to what happens. Peter goes, the angel says, put on your garments and follow me. Um, he got all ready. They walked out of the jail. Um, and then Peter says, it's too good to just skim through it. It says, they, they passed the first and the second guard posts. They came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. The gate, an iron gate. It's like it suddenly stepped into the future and became an automatic door. You know, when you step towards the mall, walk towards the door and it slides open. This iron gate did this. God is able to miraculously open doors for you. Hear this. Somebody here needs to hear this. God is able to cause a door that has remained tightly shut and locked and barricaded. You get people to agree with you and they're praying the miraculous, dynamite, power of God prayers. God is able to cause that door to open before you as you move towards it. Somebody needed to hear that. So this is what happened for Peter. Um, and then it says, and when Peter had come to himself... I mean, um, immediately the angel departed once the gate opened. He was on his own. And then he came to himself. It's like, what just happened? Uh, he says, now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. This was a miracle happening right here. So he, he thought about this. He gets to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname is Mark, where many were gathered together praying. This is where the power was. And he goes to the door and he knocks at the door. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. And I remember many years ago in another Bible that I had, I had a little note that said the name Rhoda means fragrance. Something like fragrance of God. And, and I, be, I looked at that and, I, I, like, you know, these people praying these prayers for Peter were releasing the fragrance of faith to God and God could move. And so she comes to the door, but when she, she recognized his voice, because of her gladness, she didn't open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. This is what miracles do. She was so excited. Their prayers had been answered. She didn't even open the door. She ran in and said to these guys, Peter's at the door. And then, to make it even worse, the people who were praying the dynamite, miraculous power, miraculous power, working power of God, didn't believe her that Peter was at the door. They'd been praying so much that they didn't even recognize that their prayer had already been answered. Have you ever done that? And so, they said to her, you are beside yourself. In other words, you are crazy. You must be kidding. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, no, it's his angel. They had an answer. They couldn't believe the miracle when it happened in answer to their prayers. So Peter continued knocking. And when they opened the door, they said, and they saw him, they were astonished. I believe God's going to astonish a lot of us in these days by giving us the answers to prayers, by the miracles we need. And we're going to be so astonished at the miracle working power of God in our lives. Um, I, I had a few more here. There's Acts 16, where Paul and Silas are locked up in jail as well, and they begin to praise God. And, you know, an earthquake happened, and they were released from jail. Then there's Acts chapter 17, which we'll do quickly, um, where this is another miracle. Um, Paul, uh, he comes in, and they're preaching in Athens. They get to Athens. Um and now Athens is the place where the, there were philosophers. 
And they had set up a statue with an inscription, an altar with an inscription to the unknown God. They didn't know who they were worshipping. And then Peter comes in and says to them, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Maybe you can go and read Acts 17 yourself. And he starts saying to them, Therefore the one whom you worship without knowing him, him I proclaim to you, God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. And then it goes on and he says in verse 27, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. And then he preaches this amazing message and he says, God commands men everywhere to repent and these people turn to God. And I want to say to you, in these days, we need to see the miracles when there are people out there who are seeking for God in every other kind of way, in every cause that they can find, and the mental health awareness and the gender-based this and that and whatever else is going on. And people are searching. What they're really searching for is to find God. And we carry this inherent miracle working power of God that we pray. We have boldness to, to say what God says we need to say. And people like these guys in Athens who were philosophers are going to be turned around and pointed to the God we know. He will no longer remain an unknown God. This is why God wants to release miracles and signs and wonders and, and extraordinary healings through his people so that people who know him as the unknown God are going to be turned around faced with the God we know, the one and only God. So, okay, so now I want to give you a few reasons why God heals today, and then I'll pray for you. Just a few. If you'd go to Matthew 15, the book of Matthew chapter 15, I'm so excited about the miracles that, that God has done and that he is about to do through his people. And um, why do you think there have been schools of supernatural ministry that have popped up over the years? It was prophetic schools first, where people get equipped to hear from God. And then it's healing rooms popped up everywhere. People were trained how to pray for the sick. School of supernatural ministry. All of these things have been setting things in place in the church so you and I can be part of the miraculous outpouring of God. And this inherent dynamite power that we've been sitting with is awakened and activated and released through God's people to bring the harvest in. So, why does God heal today? Matthew chapter 15 from verse 30. Um, it's feeding of the, the 5,000. The 4,000. Yeah. Then in verse 30 it says, Then great multitudes came to him, came to Jesus, having with them the lame, the blind, the mute, the maimed. It's like everything you can think of and many others, and they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. All of them got healed. So the multitude marveled when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. I said that already. The reason for miracles is to glorify God. Now Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. I want to say to you, this was a three-day revival. All these people who needed a miracle brought to Jesus and you see them healed. Go and read Isaiah 35. And that's a prophetic word of for then and today. The, the, the lame will walk, the blind will see, and and. Go read Isaiah 35. Jesus, one of the reasons God heals is because he has compassion on people. Obvious. Compassion on people. But can you imagine this? Three days of glory. Amazing. Where people didn't want to go home. They didn't want to leave for five minutes to get something to eat at McDonald's. Because they were seeing miracles before their eyes. Don't you want to be in a three-day meeting? But the best of all is that Jesus made sure that they got fed. There has to be some food involved. So then, Matthew chapter 8 is another one. Reasons why God heals. Matthew chapter 8, uh, 16 says this. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. 
and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness, sicknesses, not just sickness. God heals because it's prophecy being fulfilled. In the Old Testament, prophecies came that the Savior would heal, that by his stripes we are made whole, we are healed. All of these prophecies, the reason God heals today is he's, he's saying, I said this was going to happen. I'm not a man that I should lie. Healing is part of the covenant that God made with his people. Acts chapter 10. Go back to the book of Acts chapter 10. And I don't always give you so many scriptures, but when we talk about miracles and healing, it's, as I said, it's so important. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says this. Um, Oh, God anointed. Let's read from verse. I'll read from verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and beginning and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, there's the dynamite, miraculous working power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. When God heals, he is destroying the works of the enemy. And that's, that is one of the best things ever. Healing is, uh, sickness is not from God. Sickness is not sent to you to teach you a lesson, to help you to have more faith, to glorify God. Sickness comes from the devil, and when healing happens, it's to destroy the works of the devil. And here's my last scripture, Acts 4 verse 4, and I think we read it already, uh, maybe not, Acts chapter 4 verse 4, and then it says here, However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. I want to, That's after Peter preaches the, the, this great message, after the man at the gate beautiful got healed. When healing happens, souls are brought into the kingdom. People are awakened to the presence of God, to the goodness of God, to the miracle working power of the God we serve, and souls come into the kingdom. So, I'm not going to give you any more. You've got plenty of scriptures on there. I just want to see who said yes to needing a miracle, and then we're going to pray. Um, Sharon Milan, nice to see you. Need him every day. Yes, me too. There's never a moment where we can say, I don't need him. I need him all the time. Um, good morning, Michelle. Driving. Keep your eyes on the road there. Um, okay, so, I'll, yeah, um, even iron has to fit in with God's plans. I love that story about Peter being released from prison, and the iron gate opened of its own accord. They didn't have to go and knock at the gate or use a, what, a handle or a latch or whatever they had in those days. The gate just opened. Here you go. That's It's a miracle. I want to pray for people today who need a miracle when it comes to doors that need to open for them. And I'm talking about doors of revelation. God needs to speak to you. I'm talking about doors of opportunity where the enemy has stolen and kept things closed up for you. And I want to pray that as people begin to pray together, as people begin to agree together, that those doors will open and opportunities and favor will come your way. And revelation from heaven will come your way to give you strategies, to give you answers to prayer, to give you um, declarations to make to lead you to the right scriptures so that those doors are open in Jesus name because it's God's will for wisdom that God wants to release wisdom for people in the season not not natural wisdom but supernatural wisdom it says if any one of you lacks wisdom come to God who gives liberally without finding fault and he gives generously and so Lord I pray for your wisdom in this time for the 
the gates of heaven to be opened. That the King of Glory may come into every situation. Lord, I pray for people who need miracles. They need miracles financially. I want to ask you, Lord, do the miracles. Rory and I live a miracle lifestyle when it comes to provision. And Lord, you, if you do it for us, you can do it for other people too. And so, Lord, we just agree together today for miracles in the financial area today. Where people need provision, where people need breakthrough, where people need employment where people need to pay school fees and, and bonds and whatever else it is to put petrol in their cars. We do not belong to the system of the world, the way there's poverty and lack that just rules and reigns. We belong to the kingdom of God that cannot be shaken and where our Father is the provider and He gives generously and He gives extravagantly. And he opens ways where there seem to be no ways. And so, Lord, I, I just ask you, Father, I agree together with everybody here agreeing with me for miracles in the financial area. In Jesus' name, for, merit, for finance to come, to provide for your people. In Jesus' name. There's a scripture that says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. And Lord, we are not called to be beggars. We are children of the King of Kings and we thank you for financial miracles today in Jesus' name. And then I want to pray for the healing. Lord, we spoke about healing, that Jesus went about doing good and healing all who came to him. All, not just some, because they looked better or they had more faith or whatever it was. These people in the Bible were desperate. They, some of their friends brought them to them. I think of the guy, he was his friends led him down through the roof. They had the faith. Jesus looked at them and saw the faith of his friends and the guy got healed and forgiven. And so, Lord, today we agree for healing today, for miracles in the, in the, in the physical realm, for those miracles where, where arms can't move, where backs are sore, where, where people can't hear or see properly. Um, there's somebody watching you who struggles with migraines. And, Lord, I just release healing for that person today. Migraines go in Jesus' name. We speak the word and healing comes. We agree with your word today because there's miraculous power in the word of God. And we just release miracles today. We receive miracles from heaven today in Jesus' name. So I trust you were encouraged today. Um, if you send me your testimonies, because whenever I pray for healing, I expect testimonies. So send them to me in Messenger. Um, so I can share them with other people who need to hear a testimony that God did something for you and he can do it for them. He wants to do it for them. We serve a good God. He's always good. He always knows what's best for you and I. He wants to provide for you. He wants to do over and above what you can ask or think or even imagine. Remember that exceedingly abundantly above what the devil's showing you. That's the God we serve. Exceedingly abundantly above those things that you, you close your eyes and you say, God, I ask you for this little bit. And God says, I want to do exceedingly abundantly above that. So expect that today. Expect the goodness of God. Expect the miracle working God, power of God in your life. But most of all, remember that God has set in place in the church miracles. And you're part of that today. So I want to say just before I go that if you are in Cape Town, please register for a new thing on the 6th of November. It's all over Facebook. The 6th of November, it's not going to be one of those days where people are preaching for hours. We're going to have worship. We are going to have a bit of a preach to lay a foundation, but it's a prophetic ministry day, and I'm trusting God for healing and miracles on that day. So if you're not in Cape Town, pray for me, please. Um, if you are in Cape Town, get your friends together, register. It's free. You know how to register. You can find a new thing on Facebook and get there because we're already just over halfway and it's happening in two weeks time I think it's the 21st yeah it's two Saturdays from this coming Saturday so get yourself in there um, it's all safe it's all the COVID protocols are in place but it's a prophetic healing ministry morning that we're going to have so I love you all thank you so much for joining in and I will be praying for you okay I see lots of comments there that I need to go and look there Rest in the finished works. Amen, Cornelia Groves. It's time to rest in the finished works and expect to see the miraculous poured out in your life and through your life. So have a fantastic Thursday.
and I will see you soon again. Lots of love. Bye. Thanks for joining today's session. I hope you were equipped, empowered, and encouraged today by what you heard. Remember, you can find all the live video sessions that you may have missed on this page, on the Facebook page, Kathy Mole Ministries, or on YouTube, Kathy Mole on YouTube. You can also find all the other resources on kathymole.com. Thank you.